Welcome back. Yesterday we spent doing the cam timing on here. Uh, it was a real faff because I haven't got the cylinder head off so I can't easily check top dead centre. I had to do it by eye and keep checking it hadn't moved. And also checking the uh, movement on the push rod was really difficult as well because uh, I had no way of easily accessing the push rod as you would do if there was no rockers on. Um, so I basically took all of yesterday afternoon and evening to do the cam timing. These, if you can sort of see these, each one of these donates one time that I attempted to do the cam timing recorded the figures. So it was a real ball ache and as you can see, I'll hold that up to the camera so you can see it. Yeah, you can see that, that very last one, 106 degrees, which is what I was aiming for all that time. I had problems with the cam, kept slipping. I'll bring it into here so you can see. Uh, yeah, the cam adjusts in these slots. Uh, it's uh, known as a vernier cam timing. And as I loosened it, the tension on the cam and in the wheel would move it more than what I wanted so I kept losing where I was at so having to keep doing it and redoing it and redoing it and redoing it so it was an absolute pain but it's done now so the next job will be to take all these gubbins off put the timing cover on um, work, check the cam pulley or the crank pulley I have to make sure wherever I put it I have to make sure that the tooth, the missing tooth for the timing pickup is in the same place as the old one to help with setting it up again. Um, the difference is that the new crank pulley on the tooth wheel, skin missing there, it um, doesn't have a missing tooth so I'm going to have to knock that out but I want to do it in the same place as the old one to make sure uh, things are easier for me. Right, so that's the crank pulley on, timing case is all on, fastened up. Next job will be to put this on, it's just a radiator bracket, and then see how this new crank pulley affects the orientation of my timing bracket I've got in here for the pickup. It might need altering either in or out because it's different to the old pulley. So it's not looking a million miles off and there's plenty of room around here as well to get your fan belt on and off if you should need to. It was very marginal on the old one. But uh, yeah, that looks good. So lunch time and then fix this. So 
so that's the bracket for the trigger wheel etc and sensor all done took uh, many many hours but it always does um, the important thing was to get a gap in there of around about a millimeter or less which is quite tricky which required constant rebending to try and get it right all I can do is put it in the car and you can do some testing on the on the DTA and it'll tell you straight away if you're picking up a, a crank signal and it'll also work out where that missing tooth is in relation to top dead center as well which is quite clever welcome back so this afternoon this happened so yep engine went back in this afternoon with dad's assistance it's just held in with the two bolts and the engine mounts at the moment and i've just started to uh, spend the evening refitting all the parts I'll start off down there with the starter motor um alternator and do that and do the oil filter i don't have the pipe that goes the oil transfer pipe because it was broken and i've ordered a fresh one so all the stuff down this side of the engine bay has got to go back in there's the air horns the compressor the wiring for that uh, oil pressure pipe has to come down through that way and then there's the big elephant's trunk goes down over there and obviously down the back there's the clutch slave to go in there clutch cylinders to go in the pipes uh, i'm probably going to start off after I've done the starter motor and the alternator with the exhaust down the back because I think it would be best to put that in before I put the pot joints in and then go from there That's it for tonight it's midnight so it's time to pack up um, I've got quite a lot done I've got the starter motor on I've got the alternator fuel rails are on the injectors are connected up all the wiring looms connected up what else have I done air horn compressors in air horns exhaust is on starter motor is wired up engine steadies are on so yeah it's not looking too bad by uh, by tomorrow tomorrow night should be pretty much done 
famous last words. Welcome back, it's the next day and I've been working in the garage all morning. Uh, it's late afternoon now. Uh, you can see behind me there, I've got a few bits and pieces put on. I'll uh, do a quick walk around of what I've got fit so far. Alright, so the oil cooler's on, filled up with oil. I fitted the filter back plate um, and I've done the usual trick of putting a bit of sealant on the flange here on the back to stop any dust and stuff coming around the edges where the plate doesn't quite fit. Done the coil bracket, took a bit of work, a few bits of alter in there, a breather there. Got the thermostat housing all finished painted and fitted up, top rad bracket on. I do have a concern that it's pushing or pulling the radiator back towards the crank pulley. And the bottom radiator hose is like really, really close. There's like a tiny, tiny gap before. Now I imagine there's no gap. Over here, nothing much to see. I've got the drive shaft back into the gearbox on this side. It's just a case of you sort of tilt it back and push it and as the drive shaft goes in hits the pot joint and pushes it into the gearbox. This side was easy so it's all torqued up. <laughs> this side's still to do but it's proven to be not as easy. I think it could be the circuit on the gearbox shaft on the output shaft it was a little bit deformed it could be just a little bit hard for the pot joint to snap over it so I'm just going to work on this side next and then I can start looking at the rest of the exhaust in the gear change housing this is the rod change gear change housing I'm going to use it was black just coated with oil and crap cleaned it all off and painted it so it's uh, ready to go in. All I've got to do is take off the actual gear stick so I can offer it up under the car to see where these mountains go, which is going to be the tricky part, I think. Well, that's it for tonight. Calling it quits. I still can't get the driver's side pot joint to snap into the gear box. It just seems to be hanging up on the snap ring all the time. And uh, I fitted the gear change mechanism loosely in place. And as you can see, it's going to be an absolute ball ache. As per normal. The exhaust is going to need a total refabrication. Because it was custom, because it never did fit straight from the factory. Or the Manifold factory. So it was all taller, the white piece was all altered to suit the car. Now it's going to need altering again. And you can see the Lambda boss there is right where the rods are for the gear change even that even though that gear change needs to go up quite a bit into the into the well what are you going to call it the exhaust tunnel it's going to need a serious amount of work to get that to fit neatly and it needs to go up a good i don't know two inches or so yet but i don't think that's going to be enough to clear the lambda so that's going to need altering, but the awkward thing about that is though, it has to be a, a, an angle pointing down the hill so it doesn't fill up with fluids and oil and whatnot. So, fun, fun, fun.